Hi everyone, welcome to um, Citizen, um, new Citizen channel. Um, it's uh, Friday the 30th of August, it's the day before we, we take on Brighton and Hove Albion in our fourth uh, game of the season. We've uh, played three, one, two, drawn one so far, but it's at, at the old Etihad, so I'll see, I'll see obviously a couple of, peop couple of people there tomorrow I usually meet up with. Right, citizen, I'll just do a quick summary of what I am and what I do. I, obviously, I'm into it. I love films and board games and stuff, and uh, I do little uh, live YouTube things on that. But obviously, my other, my other love is, um, is football and obviously, in particular, Manchester City. Um, I was born in Presswich um, in 1959 in Heaton Park, which uh, was the old prefabs that were built after the war. Uh, I was born in there in 1959, and we actually, in 1961, moved to Withington. And anyone who knows Withington, who knows knows Manchester, knows that 15, 20 minutes up the road was uh, was Main Road. Um, it's a great place. I was only two when we moved, but by the mid 60s, by the time I was six or seven, my dad was um, around about World Cup time. I remember World Cup rally and all this sort of thing uh, in 1966. Um, obviously my clearest memories of, of City and Main Road probably start 67, 68, but I think I was going in 1967. My dad sadly passed away in 1970, so uh, I can't look back and think. And I do have my programs that I used to get. My dad used to buy me programs, used to cut up and stick on the wall, so I can't even look back at those to, to say, yes, I was, I was, that was my first game or whatever. Anyway, so living in Willington, it was literally a 20 minute walk. Up U Tree Road, which is where my sister still lives now. She still lives in my old house on U Tree Road. Uh, over the railway bridge, um, next to a pig farm at the time in the 60s. So it was a bit of a stink sometimes. Some some rags used to say it was the stink coming from Main Road, but you know, they just give them a crack and they do it all right. Um, so yes, there's a pig farm there. So it's up over the bridge. And when you got to that bridge, you could see it in the distance, main road, the, the floodlights and the stands. And, you know, I got a similar view in Platfields Park as well. You could go up a little hill in Platfields Park, which isn't far, wasn't far away from me. And again, you could see the stadium and the floodlights. And it was, I mean, it gives me a little bit goosebumps now thinking about main road and, and those days. It were great. So anyway, I'm obviously, I've, I've been following the city since the mid-60s. I've not always been there. You know, I've go to all all the games you know I've, I've, I've had a life you know i've had, I've had family I've, I've had responsibilities so you know i have been to lots of away games in little chunks throughout throughout my you know throughout time uh, at the moment i've got a season car but i really can't afford away games so obviously i just go to make an effort to go to cup semi-finals and finals which is obviously there's enough of those so over time i'm not i'm no ian cheese but i've not been to 2000 city games but i've been to hell of a lot of city games we've got some great memories and this is why i want to do this and I go back to the 1980s when King of the Kippats came out. Um, I'd, I'd been doing a, a fanzine stroke magazine uh, on computer get on computer games for the Spectrum Commodore Amst uh, Amstrad. I used to do hints and pokes, and I used to have a team of people who would who would hack games and give me the hints and pokes because I, I was never any good with games. Manic Meyer, I used to get up to level 13, 14, and um, get stuck. So. But in these magazines at the time, like computer and video magazines, there's various magazines published widely available, like there is now in the 80s. Um, they would give hints and pokes of how to get infinite lives or infinite weapons or adventure games, walkthroughs. So if you got stuck somewhere, you could find out what to do. And what I did was basically put all that information in, in one document and I started doing it while I worked at GEC and I was earning quite quite a bit of money on the side because I was I was doing an A4 photocopy. I was spending, obviously, it took time to do it, to get all the information together, an electric typewriter, cut it all out and stick it to A4 sheet, A4 plain sheets and make it into a booklet. So I was selling these through up to two or three hundred every month so i was a nice little earner at the time because obviously i was using gc i won't get in trouble hopefully i was <laughs> now you know i don't know 40 years later i was using their photocopies so it wasn't costing me anything obviously it was costing me my time so yeah i mean i was putting the effort in to get what to get a garden anyway i joined i joined with a with a, a fellow a, a guy i used to work for at gc and we, we set out doing it as a magazine and you know without going to great detail we used to sell through computers, specialist computer shops, and we could, we sold up to 6,000 a month, but we had to progress the thing. We had a team of people. We had a lot of 10 or 12 people working for us at the time, and we just couldn't compete with the big boys. We couldn't get enough finance to actually make the magazine bigger and better and get into the uh, paper shops, etc. So 
it, in the end, it, just, it it did fade out. But in the eighties, that left me in the, in the late eighties um, with a few Apple. We had some Apple Apple Macs at the time, which were not like what they are now. Apple Mac. We had the Apple Macintosh. You, you know, you may you may remember those with the little tiny screen. But they were state of the art at the time. We did the desktop publishing, which is what Eddie Shah brought into uh, Fleet Street and all this sort of thing, caused all the bother. So we used to do these magazines. On, on computers, which was way ahead of its time at, at, that, at that time. You know, no one, Eddie Shaw was doing it in Fleet Street, but there wasn't many magazines being produced purely on computer, which is what we were doing. We had an artist, obviously, who, who had an input as well. So anyway, we we had these Apple Macs uh, left, and, uh, you know, obviously I was massive into City then in the 80s, even though things had started to, <laughs> to go badly wrong. We probably, I thought we were at our lowest ever. Well, little did I know it would probably get worse. So in the late eighties, um, I used to work for um, City on the commercial side. I used to it used to be called a uh, lottery ticket, City Bingo tickets. Uh, and I saw you, uh, I think the uh, guy's name. I don't know if he's still with us. And, and Mr. Critchley, who was the commercial director at Manchester City at the time, you know, direct link to Peter Swales. Um, so I had these Apple Macs. And I thought, hey, you know, there's nothing. And I think I don't think King. Of the, I think King of the Kipax had probably just come out or was coming out. And obviously that was a fanzine for Manchester City, along with some others, obviously at the time. And even though I'd only done computer fanzine, obviously I knew a lot about City. One of my loves. I've been I've been following City them for twenty odd years. So. I was looking for something to do. I didn't, you know, I was always looking for something to do. I probably had to go out and get a job at the time as well. So I thought, no, I've got these Apple Macs. They're on lease, and I had them for a few months still. Uh, they were paid for. So I just had them sat there. I thought, I'm going to try and produce a magazine for Manchester City. And what I did was speak to Critchley in the 80s, and there was actually a thing in the um, uh, to see if, if I did a match, I wasn't asking him to do it with Manchester City's sort of uh, help as such. I was telling him what I wanted to do, you know, to do a magazine. Um, there wasn't a City magazine at the time. They did eventually come one two or three years later. But then, I, you know, I was telling him what I wanted to do with interviews. And he said, I said, and even if we don't get interviews, I, I, you know, I could put something, I could put something together, the history of City, various things, you know, using stuff that obviously they have in the programme, but adapting it, you know, I, I had thoughts of doing something a little bit different. So, and I spoke to Critch, I had two meetings with, uh, with the commercial guy, and it did end up that this that he actually said to me that obviously you kick it off, obviously I can't guarantee you anything, he said to me, obviously, but there's no reason why at some stage you can't have access to players and access to stuff at Manchester City. So, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, as I say, I wasn't, the business, had, my old business had failed. I didn't have loads of money, so it was obviously time and effort. I actually spoke to, um, I started putting stuff together for a first issue, um, uh, spoke to people like Colin Bell on the phone, um, uh, and I actually had a, a proper interview with Bernard Manning, who was fantastic at the time. I wish I still had a tape of that, but that's got lost all, lost in the ether. So anyway, I'd interviewed Bernard Manning, and I'd put a lot of work together. I hadn't finalised the thing. What, what I wanted to do, I went to um, a City game, um, and we did a leaflet drop. I had about 20,000 leaflets, uh, just an A4 leaflet, and it was called The Citizen, the magazine. This is why I'm calling this The Citizen, with an I, not a Y, like they do now. Um, and I'd give these out. I had about 20 people helping me. I paid them so much again. So I say I didn't have a lot of money. I paid them so much to give all these leaflets out at the match. And any leaflets we didn't give out at the match at Main Road, um, uh, Critchley allowed me to leave all the paper bags. I had loads of paper boy bags and stuff and all the all the leaflets we didn't give out, which wasn't many. We give most of them out um, in, in the commercial department at Main Road there in the corner of the North Stand. So he allowed me to put them there and then I could go and watch the match and have, enjoy the match without, without, having worry, without worrying. So anyway, I mean, this Citizen Four, I mean, there was I got lots of checks and subscriptions. It was a bit about what it was. Um, so I took all this in and literally... A, two, a couple of weeks later, uh, Critchley came on to me and said, he, "City don't like City don't like what I'm doing." Um, so I had a quick, but it, it was a quite abrupt. Obviously, reading between the lines, Swales had Swales had come down on this. He didn't like it, seen it. There was a, a little thing put in. A, uh, I've got it somewhere in one of my memory boxes. I'll talk about them later. Um, there was a little disclaimer in the City program saying this. This magazine has nothing to do with Manchester City. And obviously, Critch was saying, if I wanted to go ahead and still do it, then I could still do it. But I didn't want to be a King of the Kip Hats particularly. I didn't want to be a fanzine. I wanted to be a little bit more than that. And this is what I'm saying. I wanted to be a little bit different. 
So I just shelved the idea. All the checks I had, I had hundreds of checks sent in to me for subscriptions. I literally just didn't, obviously, I didn't cash them. They just ended up being burned to something. I had, and I couldn't physically write to everyone and uh, apologize and say. So it, it went by the way. So the people who were around at the time, probably someone may remember this. And I'm sorry it was me. I did my best. But uh, as I said, I never cashed any checks. So I just, I just ended up burning them or getting rid of them. Or, or so I think I. Uh, put them in one of those machines to get to, to destroys things and it was such a pity and I, and I give up on that and obviously I had to go out <laughs> had to go out and get a proper job because I didn't I didn't want it to be a fanzine I wanted it to be a bit more than that I and mean, no disrespect to the king of the kickbacks and and then all the stuff at the time which was superb I, I used to buy them all the time I still read them now on Kindle um I just didn't want to do that and this thing now I'm doing now I don't particularly want to be another podcast or a thing that's going on about the matches and re i mean of course i'll talk about a match and i'll talk about various things but i just want to add a couple of little things that are a little bit different you know a little bit of the history I, i'm no gary james I, I, again i'll speak about gary james later what a great guy i mean i've not i've probably he's probably forgot more than i know and then again i forgot more than i know now because you know i'm not the greatest but i do have memory boxes and i've always kept memory boxes from from um, being a teenager so i've always kept my old programs and stuff about city there's always things that, that you get that are not you know not programs but information i used to do scrapbooks over the over time stuff like that so i've got all these memory boxes i've got some of them here now with me and i've got some at my son's and i'd obviously my sons are obviously we go to the matches together now off season card in the singing section and uh I'd love him to come on with me. He's a bit, he's a bit apprehensive. But I said, "No, come on." He said, "Oh, you got to edit." I said, "No, you don't have to edit. Let's just do it off the cuff and have because we because we have good banter, me and my lad." He has a sometimes a totally different view to me, so that, that's good watching. So I'm going to try and get him on one of these um, in future ones, and we could do it as a pair, and uh, uh, it should be good fun because we do have a bit of banter, and uh, it's it's great to have that. And that's just a little bit different again for for what I, what I'm trying to do. So anyway, today what what I'm going to do? I'm going. This is the first one. Uh, just see how it goes. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll have a quick look. Obviously, this this I have a look at the Twitter stuff. I'm obviously big on Twitter. I've probably blocked more people than I should have done. You know, I don't take any rubbish from the Liverpool fans and all these other fans. But obviously, I get things retweeted to me, so I pick on some of the rubbish that's out there about City. You know, and I, I stick up for City and City are my team at the end of the day. There'll be a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit about Bright, a little bit about Champions League. Uh, something on Burnley, obviously. I've been following Gary James, who obviously is, is, has been quite thing on Burnley, posting things this week. And such, such, such a shame. Um, and obviously, I'll, I'll, what I'll do, I'll dip into, I've just picked a memory box at random and I've come out with uh, the season, believe it or not. And this is a season that probably gets glossed over a little bit because of the pre the season after. And this 1997-1998, so uh, a season that started out in Division 1. So I've just looked at around this date. So I've looked at August of that um, of that season a nice, and also a, sort of a special magazine that came out in the winter of that year. But I'll just have a look at that. As I said over the weeks, I won't have time to specifically go and but I'll pick it, I'll pick a year now. I'll have to go to my lads and get his get the memory memory boxes out of his loft as well, because there's loads in there. But I just happened to pick 1978. So I'll tell you a bit about that later, and that'll be the, the main crux of the of, of the thing anyway. Um just looking at the Twitter versus week. Obviously, there's been a few things on uh, Twitter, and I just I just look at a few things here. I mean the, the Champions League draw yesterday, I mean, obviously we're boiling. I mean, pardon me, I will have a bit of swearing with this. It's hard not to go on, on Twitter and not find things where they're swearing. It's obviously boiling piss, the fact we've got a so-called easy group again, um, which is absolutely ridiculous. And again, we had that with the Carabao Cup draw, even, even though obviously other top six teams have got easy draws. Obviously, we're, we're, we're the ones who, who are actually getting the easy draw all the time. It, it's absolute bollocks, but, I mean, there you go. That's how it is. Um, so I was just looking at um, a quick look at what was on Twitter this week. Uh, I go on Facebook, but obviously Twitter's far quicker to look at. Uh, i just like to, obviously, one thing, there's an awards going on, wasn't it, with the UCL things? Obviously, never any City players. But, yes, there was, because obviously you've got the, the lovely Lucy Bronze uh, won the Women's Player of the Year award. Now, if you just bear with me and take these things off, because I, I, obviously I, I don't need them to read read my phone, so obviously 
bear with me on this. So, yeah, the lovely Lucy Bronze actually um, won the Women's Player of the Year. So, congratulations to her. That was lovely. And I said, people are obviously having a whinge about the Champions League. And um, the bittersweet treble here is obviously gone on to FC Shakhtar English site. Uh, also, Shakhtar have learnt their U UA for Youth League group stage opponents. So, the bittersweet treble on, on Twitter might as well follow these now. It's becoming a derby. So, obviously, after playing them three years on the trot, I know what he's on about. Uh, Lisa Jane at Lisa1087194. Uh, she's done a little group T. We have a group T. You didn't know that, did you? A little group T for the Champions League. Um, <laughs> and that's what. Uh, she put out as a group T. So you've got United, EastEnders, Emmerdale and, and Coronation Street, which is is, is uh, quite funny there on, on that one from Lisa Jane. Um, Joanne here, another obviously City city fan at Joanne1894. Um, here we go. Group D will be one to watch with Real Madrid, Manchester City, Ajax and Borussia Dortmund shaping it. <laughs> so... <laughs> so, I mean, that is obviously from a previous Champions League. So, obviously, what John's pointing out is all this crap about us getting an easy league. Look at that. Look at that league we got, you know, a few years back. And she goes, to, she goes on to say, you obviously have a chat total shit. Only started watching football two years ago. I only became obsessed with us recently. I'll let, I'll let you choose which one fits. And that, I mean, that's a cracker. And uh, this Tottenham fan. I mean, some of the responses to this were, were quite funny. But Big Tay's here, a big Tottenham fan, at Big Tay's. Yeah, uh, sick of this shit. Every year, these lot get an easy group. Blatant match fixing. Break financial fair play, no consequences. I guess the rules only apply to some. So, I mean, he's, he's I mean, it's this guy. I mean, just have a see if there's some of the, some of the answers he's got. Obviously, a lot of City fans are pulling him up over him, giving, giving him crap on it. And obviously, he's a Tottenham fan. So, obviously, some City fan, the bittersweet treble again, which we mentioned before, comes up with Bayern Munich, Tottenham, Olympiacos, and Kurefeda Zvedza. So, he comes up and shows him that um, and says, not as easy as Bayern's group. Fucking state of the other three in that. So, obviously, Bayern, Tottenham, Olympiacos of this game. I'm not, I'm not even going to pronounce it. Uh, but T Big Tay's at least did LOL at it and says, I'm confident we get through, maybe even winning. I'm just saying, your lot group last four years has been a walk in the park, lol. So, obviously, it, it did see the funny side of it. And then he, Bittersweet Treble then said, why would you want to get out, get out of a group in a competition that's fixed? <laughs> so there you go. I mean, so someone passing the Kleenex, that's another comment, <laughs> comment to him. Uh, <laughs> and obviously that uh, Joanne wrote to him about the previous, that group we had, obviously the tough group. Uh, and Big Tay's answer to that, obviously, of being a gentleman last year, is I'm 31, you dickhead. So I've been watching football for a new lot with some lower league nobodies. Get your facts right, dickhead. So basically, lower league nobodies. He knows bugger all, obviously, anyway. And Joanne went on to answer, well, you're obviously just a fix you. So, I mean, I think that about sums it up with Big Tay's. And I think that sums it up for most of the op opposing fans on, on Twitter that, that are, are slagging City off. Um, let's have a look at this. And there's a nice little one here of um, <laughs> Man footy humour. This is it's a general one. Uh, Man City to UA for before every Champions League draw. So there's a guy giving money, just <laughs> pots of money over. So that that's quite funny. That's that's um, from Footy Humor Channel. That Footy Humor, they're worth they're always worth a look. Anyway, I mean that's the thing about the UCL. As I say, I, I was quite happy with the draw. Obviously, I can't get to the away grounds. I mean, obviously, Ukraine's a pain in the bum again. But Croatia should be a nice trip out, obviously, for everyone in Italy. So that's that's okay for you guys who can get to those games. Uh, on to Gary James, who I, who I follow this week. There's been a couple of things. He's obviously promoting his 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 books obviously get if you if you don't follow gary james at gary james writer please do it's, it's some great stuff he's obviously promoting his city folklore book um delighted to say my mcfc folklore book is rapidly selling out that was back in march 
so he had his second delivery. So he's still promoting that, obviously. Uh, he's also now promoting, if I just go a bit further down, his Manchester City women book, which is is worth a is worth a look if you've um, you must have seen that on the internet. Today is obviously the Manchester City women thing, um, which obviously you, you use Kickstarter to get that uh, get that out and about. Um, just get this thing. I've got a new phone, so you have to bear with me while I try and uh, just suss this out. There we go. So Gary, so you're always listening to Gary James. He's, he always speaks a lot of common sense. And obviously, one of the things is Burnley this week. Obviously, that that we all know about. Uh, Barry, sorry, not Burnley. Not Burnley, I mean, my Barry. Obviously, Bolton has Bolton escaped, but obviously, Gary James has, was was. Um, following this quite well um because obviously you, the bbc radio five live uh, thing with the the owner steve dale where steve dale admits he didn't even know where the football club was it was called if you go on to bbc radio five live it's still on there it's, it's it's an amazing interview i mean it's it's sad it's absolutely so sad national football museum you go onto their website uh, they've got stuff on Barry, um, some great old pictures there from uh, 113 years ago. Uh, Gary James obviously is has weighed in. Obviously, uh, this is what's wrong with football, as Dan says. That uh, Dr. Dan Parnell, Dan says these issues are seen as the problem of the latest club to suffer, not the game in general. Governance needs to stop owners from doing this. They assess fit and proper. So when it goes wrong, take responsibility. The EFL and FA. I mean. It was very good. I mean, he was following Barry all week and obviously retweeting stuff. And it was the he did point out it, uh, a couple of days ago. It was the under twenty fifth anniversary of their first EFL game. They won the FA Cup twice before either Manchester City or United had got to a final. An extremely sad day for football and Greater Manchester. Thoughts are with the fans; they deserve better. Um, so, I mean, and he goes on, there's a clip here from a, an old a newspaper thing. Two of the new organisations in Bury and Manchester City were opposing each other and the meeting attracted 7,000 spectators. Bury's victory by four goals to two confirms my previous impression that the team will prove to be one of the strongest in the second division. The two Burtons were both successful. The Swifts defeating the Swifts defeating crew out is Andrew 4-0 and the Midland League champions disposing of Rotherham. I mean, so... He takes you back, Gary James. Obviously, if you don't, if you're not following Gary James, get out and give him a follow. And it does take Gary. Apparently, Gary James did comment as uh, a book called the the Avenue. The book that most inspired me to research and write about football history was the Avenue by Michael Malcolm Hartley and Avenue Light. Long long story. Why another day, perhaps. But at the time, I read this in eight, 1987. The demise of a once significant football club really inspired me to research. So obviously Bradford Park Avenue at the time. And let's face it with Berry, they probably will come back at some stage in some some guys or other. That does happen now. But, you know, why should they have to in the first place? And these people blaming City and United and the big clubs. You don't, on Twitter again, they don't, they don't know what they're prattling on about. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. But, yeah, at Gary James Rice, if you don't follow him, get him followed. I mean, I say he does some poignant stuff there. And no doubt, perhaps he'll do something on Berry now with, with this this demise. You know, um, obviously we we appreciate the work he puts into all these things. And let's have a look at this. The last one I'm going to look at is Preston North End. Obviously, City drew Preston North End um, in the Caribou Cup this week, and it's always funny just to go on the site and look at um, what people are saying about. Uh, about the city city game, obviously, there's a lot of disquiet that you'd expect about a lot of pla a lot of so-called plastic Preston fans now turning up because of of, of lives crowd crowds they've had before. So I mean, just looking through a couple of um, answers to to the Preston's tweet about playing playing Manchester City. Um, North End have to cash in on this. If you buy a ticket for Brentford at home, then you get a chance of getting a ticket for the Man City game before general sale. We could get fifteen thousand against Brentford. Apparently, the the cup game the only chat is about five thousand the other night. So I think they get it. They're having a go at that. Um, that's huge motivation for all our players. All trying trying to get to that eleven for that game. Hopefully, we will show in our league games before that game. 
please can give please consider giving premier seats to the 5700 who turned up last night so obviously that was what happened um that uh, in the cup game 5700 turned out which wasn't bad um jack says first english league champions versus the current league champions so they are a bit of history he knows his stuff there Ashley Brown, if there's any game to open the cup for the home fans, this is the game. So obviously there must be restrict opening like like we all do. Obviously, like United are going to restrict opening the tiers, I'm sure, for Europa League games like City have restricted opening the tiers for, for early league cup games, etc. Everyone does it. So this guy is Ashley Brown saying, if there's any game to open the cup for the home fans, this is a game. Crap's answers only if we sell out, that's it. We will sell out in under three days, guaranteed. Uh, 10 pound tickets as, it, as it's a friendly, uh, <laughs> make it first come, first serve. Another nil nine. Well, I mean, I think they're giving us a bit too much credit there. I think, I think it'll be a struggle against Preston. Uh, will ambassadors get priority tickets? Everyone has to have it be at least two games. Uh, so they're all worried about the tickets and what they get. Uh, Steve, Be Steve Barry says, I was afraid that we'd get an inferior club like Man United. So uh, we can we can share that, uh, share that thought. Uh, and someone answered that by saying, Don't worry about them, they're, to they're too bothered about missing EastEnders on a Thursday night. So that that's quite funny there. Um, there's going to be bare people who don't know. <laughs> We're the one and the only North End's obviously one of their their chance, and they just sit sit there effing clueless, laugh my ass off. Yeah, you're bound, you're gonna get it. I mean, <laughs> of course you're gonna get it. So there's a lot of things there, and obviously the bit of negativity about City fans perhaps getting tickets for the Preston, and some people saying why. And I said, you know, if we get if City get a good allocation, I think City are quite well behaved anyway. If someone does get into the Preston end, I think I think most City fans are, are going to be really well behaved. There's a lot of negativity. There's one guy actually said we'll lose 9-0 and one of the answers on Twitter was, well, I don't think we'll score that many against Manchester City, which was it's quite funny. So, you know, always, amid the bitter stuff, you're always going to you're always going to get really good stuff. Um, and one, well, I'll finish with this, obviously. Last year we had a lot of Liverpool fans who were playing for teams who were opposed was obviously saying things like, um, "Oh, I'm support Liverpool, yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna beat City for you," sort of thing. And we've got this again here. Preston North End FC tweeted, "After growing up as a Manchester United fan and playing for the club, Josh Harrop, 23, is looking forward to facing the Red City rivals in the third round of the Carabao Cup." So they're gonna wheel these guys out. And finally, before I go off Twitter this week. We're playing Brighton and Hove Albion, and there's a fantastic thing on the Brighton and Hove Albion website. Um, I can't pronounce this guy's name, uh, but Nick Spanik speaks to former Albion keeper and England international Joe Corrigan ahead of Saturday's game at the Etihad. Well, I mean, Joe Corrigan was one of my absolute heroes. Um, I won't read it all out for you. I'll just read the first couple of uh, paragraphs. Corrigan on City of the States and his Albion chance. And this is on the Brighton Hove Albion website. So go to get on there and give it a read. It's a fantastic read. If you want, if you were in Central Brighton just before Christmas 1980, this is what the art start of the article. Christmas 1984. I thought you saw a six foot four, 15 stone fairy godmother in a ballet dancer's tutu. It can now be revealed that you had not overdone the festive spirits after all. The giant figure was Joe Corrigan, the Albion and former Manchester City and England keeper. Out and about in town after players' fancy dress Christmas parties. Well, that, if you knew Joe Corrigan or you know someone like me, I mean that would have been a would have been a sight to behold. Joe made an impression, whatever he wore, including the green jersey that he donned on forty-two occasions for Albion, all in the eighty-three, eighty-four season. I loved, I loved Joe. I don't think he was. I mean, I watched Joe in that in that season. He, he even played against City, I think, from memory. I might be wrong. Don't, don't you? Please, Gary James Buffs, don't don't query me on that. He's not an, he's now an ambassador for City, which we know. Albion's next opponent. He cl the club he served his distinction between sixty seven and nineteen eighty three. He made the vast majority of his six hundred and eighty six career league and cup appearances. He remembers one previous meeting between the clubs very well, an FA Cup round fourth time on the twenty ninth of January nineteen eighty three. That's effectively ended his sixteen years at Main Road. Albion put four past Joe at the Goldstone ground for the third time in four seasons. 
with Jimmy Case, Neil Smiley and Michael Robinson, the scorers. And Joe knew that the writing was on the wall for him, or not because of his performance that day. Um, last thing, my understudy at City, Alex, the great Alex Williams, had come down with the team as I came off the field and I said to him, the jersey's yours now. And it's a great little article. Get on that. That's that's the um, the Brighton website. That, that's enough for Twitter for now on there. But I'll uh, obviously in this citizen thing, if I progress with the thing, I'll I'll go on and stuff that's funny or something that annoy old city fans. I'll I'll get back on there and uh, do a thing on that. Right, just before I have a quick word on um, on the Brighton game, uh, let's delve back. Let's let's go back um, to 1997, 1998. Uh, top this off Wikipedia. It was the start of the season. And I'll just read this out to you. The 1997-98 season was Manchester City's second in the first division following relegation from the Premier League in 1995-96. Yeah, don't we know? The 1996-97 season had been a turbulent one. Five different managers took charge of the team over the course of the season. Three permanent appointments and two caretakers, including Steve Koppel, who resigned after just 32 days as a manager. Frank Clark became manager in December 1996 and was in charge for the start of the 1997-98 season. This is what I'm looking at today. Despite speculation that it linked him with the transfer, 1996-7 player, George, player of the season, Georgie King Kladsey, stayed at the club and signed a three-year contract that made him the highest paid player in Manchester City's history. The highest profile signing was striker Lee Bradbury, who joined from Portsmouth for a club record three million. Defender Tony Vaughan arrived from Ipswich. The transfer, transfer fee was decided by tribunal and set at £1.35 million, more than double City's valuation. Well, it's bound to happen. The club also signed Dutch midfielder Gerard Beekins from BV Vindham for 500000 Weekins has agreed to, Beekins had joined to, agreed to join the club in March, but the move only took place once the previous season had finished. Departing was Peter Beegree, sold to Bradford City for 200000 I used to like Peter Beegree. In an early season interview with the Sunday Times, Frank Clark bemoaned the difficulty of reducing the size of his squad. Well, this is part of our problems, wasn't it? Which contained 40 senior professionals. The squad is too big, but a lot of the players are on good contracts with other clubs that other clubs won't match. You can't blame them for saying for, for staying. Well, I mean, that's that was the thing that come back to haunt us time and time again, wasn't it? Uh, Joe, well, I won't, I won't go on to what happened after that. I mean, that's basically just the, just the summer of the. I'm not going to go. I mean, you all probably know what happened that that year. One thing that is interesting, obviously, there's the the build up of friendlies that we we had that season before the season started. Um, I'll, I'm going to have a look at August and the games, obviously, in the uh, Division One. Um, but thank you for City Till I Die for this information. Um, we played. Blackpool in a friendly on the 16th of July, 1997. We got an attendance for that. It was one all, and the scorer for City was Clough. And for Blackburn, they don't have a clue. So, But the City team, Wright, Brennan, Simmons, Beasley, Vaughan, Summerby, McGoldrick, Crooks, Vikings, Heaney, Rossless, and Dickoff. And new substitutes, Edgel, Whitley, Clough, and Greenacre. So, I mean, there's some... Some great names for you to uh, remember there. So we played Blackpool there on the 16th. And the next one, we went on the 18th. People are pine for these sort of things, won't they? On the 18th of July, Macclesfield Town nil, City 1, an attendance of 2,940. Uh, Uwe Rosler scored. So there we go. And the team again included Summerby that time. Summerby was in that team. So let's get on to the next friendly. <laughs> On 22nd of July 1997, no attendance for this one. Livingston nil, City four. Roster scored three and Dickoff one. Uh, Tony Vaughan played in that one as well. He played, he made an appearance in that game. That's the 22nd of July. So look at the next one. We went on to play still in Albion. A uh, crowd of 1,518. 1, uh, Albion nil, City nil. So that sounds an exciting game. A uh, basic team again. Heaney in there. Margus and Brightwell, Edgel, Morley, Vaughan, Sullivan, Crooks, Heaney, Horlock, Clough, Dickoff. On to the next one. We've got Kilmarnock on the 26th of July. A big, not a bad crowd. 7,101. I mean, sure, some of you out there went to these things. I mean, good on you. 
Uh, I think I might have gone to the Blackpool one myself. I can't even remember now. I can't remember that time. Uh, Kilmarnock, Neil City 4, Rossler 2, Simmons, Simons 2, or Simmons, Simons. I used to call him. It's Simons. Whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. Horlock was played in that game as well. The great Kevin Horlock. Let's see what we've got next. Uh, another friendly. So we're very busy with friendlies. 28th of July. Attendance 2,689. Falkirk 1, City 1. Scorers for City Dickoff. Scorer for Falkirk, Paul McGrillan. Um, uh, Wright was in goal. Wright, Simmons, Beasley, Vaughan, Somerville, Brannan. Uh, all, all the guys we've mentioned before. You subs Margerson, so Martin Margerson got a game there. And a lad called Greenacre. Remember Mr. Greenacre? He got a game in that one as well. Uh, now we'll go back down south. We played Mansfield Town on the 30th of July, a crowd of 2,895. Let me know if you were there. Did you enjoy the game? Mansfield Town 1, City 7. Dickoff 2, Rossler, Heaney, Jeff Whitley, Clough and Brannan all scored, and they don't even bother giving you the Mansfield score, which is which is terrible, really. I mean, 7,000 crowd. I was in the 3,000 crowd at Main Road against Mansfield. Uh, so that wasn't a bad crowd, really, was it? Margetson, Whitley, Sim Simons, Crooks, Vaughan, Morley, Somerville, Whitley, Jeff Whitley, Clough, uh, Clough, Clough, Ross Lahini, U Subs, Weaver, Brannan, Beasley, Vikings, Horlock, Dickoff, King Clancy. So a 7 1. Flashing there. I've seen a couple of sevens, I've seen a few sevens scored in my time watching City. Uh, another friendly, but yeah, we'll start the season. I think this is getting to near the end of the friendlies now, but we did fit them in the 2nd of August 1997. Burnley nil, City three, scores Bradbury two, and Kit Simon scored the other. So that was uh, no attendance for that one, unfortunately. I don't know how many we got for that one, and that's that. That's the old friendly season started. So we went on to Obviously, the season as it stands and the first game of the season, um, we played Portsmouth. Um, so I'll show you this now. There you go. There's the first uh, league programme. Welcome back inside your new look programme. I can't remember. I, mean, I can't remember what the season before was like. Lee Bradbury, Tony Vaughan, Gerard Vikings. Look at that. What a great, great programme. Manchester City versus Portsmouth. Saturday 9th of August, 3pm. Well, 3pm kickoffs in those days. Got the old laser blue there as well. The old laser blue. Uh, you've got a welcome to Main Road at, at the uh, at the start. Welcome Lee Bradbury, Jenna Vikings, Tony Vaughan and young goalkeeper Nicky Weaver. Your, uh, three new players, not a picture of Weaver. And you've got your introduction there from uh, the legend that is Frank Clark. Um, the start of a brand new season, everyone at the club is itching for the action to begin. There's been a special buzz about the place this week as we have been preparing for the big kickoff. Well, that buzz wasn't gonna, gonna last for us throughout the season, was it? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give too much away. And his final comment is a cracker here from uh, Frank I know there are some exciting days ahead. Let's hope we start with a winning one. Well, okay, Frank, let's go, you know, whatever. So and then it's a bit strengthened by Vikings, a bit on Lee Bradbury, Vikings, Lee Bradbury, or Lee Bad by his son. Look at this, old tickets. So didn't have a season card that year. I've, I've, I've had season cards some years and not other years. So it's, it's this one I didn't. So obviously look at that. Um, main stand, hates right. Row zero, suit two, seat 226, price £13. Obstructed, hey, that's a, an obstructed view. It's got three of them, so I would have took my lad and his mate probably to that one. Hey, so in a, I used to do that. I used to try and put the tickets in the program. I didn't always do that, but try and put the tickets in the program as well, so I, I wouldn't lose them. I used to just put them in the fold of the thing. You can't do that now with the new programs, obviously. Um, right, then you got main moments. So you got the programs at that time were good, and it was a time of the new badge. I mean, we just uh, obviously the new badge had just come in with the laser blue kit. So the analogy of why we got the new badge, everything there. Uh, watching City Magazine, 1997, 1998. Obviously, as I said, I go back to the 80s when I was trying to produce one for City. Obviously, they're doing their own. So we sub subscribe, similar to what I put out at the, uh, at the game. Uh, so you got a couple of pages on Ports Portsmouth there. I don't think from memories, uh, apart from Alan Dyke in goal, uh, there's a lot 
not many of the Portsmouth team that were familiar names to me now anyway from obviously at the time perhaps the I'll see where their manager was Terry Fenwick at the time. Um, again, they're publicising their own magazine, City Magazine. Action from the Blackpool City game, the friendly game. I always love those old action pictures, especially, especially in the older programmes where I've got the black and white ones. I love those black and white photos from the 60s and 70s and even the 50s. Um, well, back in 67, 68, look at that program there. I probably had that, them similar programs, Borussia Dortmund. I had, um, it takes a look back at the 67, 68 season. And who's looking back at it? Gary James. Who else would look back at that season? The the programs were great. I mean, the programs at those times were, were great. There's one of his books, Gary James, Manchester City, the greatest city, giving it publicity. You got to pull out in the middle, Chris Green A, so you could pull that out and put it up on your wall. I was by this time I didn't do things like that when I was a kid I used to all the time. <laughs> then there was a summary of the nationwide, so what was going on in the nationwide division one at the time. So uh, more action. That's the blues in Scotland, which we talked about. And reserves. So they had a look at the reserves and gives you the fixtures for 97, 98. Max Day Marvels looking back at some old players supporting the blues. Uh, junior Blues had its own little section. We saw the Junior Blues then. Uh, Moonchester. <laughs> Youth Development. Centenary Supporters Association. And look at that. A, a, a thing at the uh, uh, Mary and Ryan gigs. I, was, I wonder if anyone went to see that at the time. A scorching new comedy, obviously, involving City and United. And uh, that was interesting. Obviously, you had your tables and your full fixtures there. Obviously, in August we played Portsmouth at home, Blackpool away in the cup, Sunderland away in the Sunderland away in the league, Tranmere Rovers at home, Blackpool at home again in the second leg. Used to be two legged the uh, the league cup in those days, and Charlton away on the thirtieth of August. Um, so little pen marks on the back there. You used to tick things. My lad probably um, I would have been destroying my programs. I perhaps bought two and kept one for him, and I'll give him a load of these. So he's got a load of these programs as well. But that's the. Uh, but I, they were good programs at those times. I mean, you can't you can't really quibble, can you? Those the quality of those programs. Uh, with the game, well, the game ended one one. Um, sorry, two two. I'm getting it totally wrong there. Attendance of thirty thousand four hundred seventy four. So it's a cracking attendance. Rossler scored. Uh, on 16 minutes, Vikings on 55. Portsmouth, Aloisi scored after five minutes, so they took the lead. And Hall scored an equaliser on 80 minutes. And the team that day was Margotson, Brightwell, Vaughan, Vikings, Simmons, Beasley, Brannon, Horlock, Radbury, King Clancy, Rosler, Sub Summerby, used, came on the 45th minute, Dickoff, 78th minute, and Morley was unused. So, as I said, the Portsmouth team, I don't really know anyone in that night. The goalie rings a bell, but no, nobody else, really. So, that was a disappointing start, obviously, 2-2. And then, obviously, the following week, we went off to Blackpool. Um, I may, again, I, I could have gone to this. I, as I say, my memory's rubbish. I don't have a programme there, but that doesn't necessarily mean I didn't go. Sometimes I lose, the, I've, lo I've lost the odd programme or just didn't buy a programme. My money was tight at the time. Uh, so we went to the Coca-Cola Cup. First round, first leg. Blackpool won, City nil. An attendance of 8,000. And the scorer was Priest for Blackpool. So that was disappointing, obviously, for City. Uh, Marcus and Brightwell, Vaughan, Vikings, Kerr, Kernigan, Summerby, Brandon, Horlock, Bradbury, King Clancy, Rosler, Subs, Goldrick, Weaver and Morley. So, I mean, that was a great start, wasn't it? Coca-Cola Cup, lose, lose nil, one nil. So that took us to our second league game, 15th of August, and up to Sunderland, and a crowd of 38,000. So all credit to Sunderland, they were getting some good support then. We do know they're a little bit iffy up and down Sunderland, but uh, uh, this season, 97-98, that certainly beat our, we could, we could only hold 33, 34,000, so it would have beat our crowds. Um, Sunderland won 3-1, Sunderland 3, City 1, King Hadsey scored our goal from a penalty. For Sunderland, the scores were Quinn, Phillips and Clark. Well, there you go. Uh, Margotson, Brightwell, Vaughan, Vikin, Simmons, Kernigan, Brannon, Horlock, Bradbrick, and Clancy Rosler. Sub Summer became on 74th minute. Weaver unused Van Burke. So you're getting a goalkeeper on the subs bench as well, then, which is uh, 
it was uh, probably not something that was was done much before then but obviously i'm not sure when that came in i'd have to have a look right and on to the next one was another home game which obviously again i've got the program to this as i said sometimes i didn't buy programs or i lost programs but i mean obviously i've got program for the Tranmere game inside tonight jed brennan tommy wright same format jason van blurk a couple of things in here i'll just tell you about obviously that, that are of interest to us um right pain so obviously uh the goalkeeper here we go um tommy wright for injury for tommy wright to sit out the tail end of last season and this season starts the same way for the northern ireland captain he missed the last six games due to a knee problem so he's obviously got problems this season as well uh, mr frank clark obviously after that positivity last week um his first paragraph. We are still in the early days of this season, but obviously we have not started as well as we had hoped. Well, there you go. And obviously his last paragraph. Um, I would like to extend a warm welcome to John, Ald John Aldridge and his team. There you go, John Aldridge uh, for Chamme. Um, who I'm sure will be expecting an excellent contest between two sides who are capable of playing first-class football. John has my special wishes. I know how time-consuming the manager job can be, and yet he still manages to play as well. So obviously... He was being a player manager, so we know what's happened to Vinny recently with that with that thing. Um, so then again, we've got things on the polls. In main attraction, there's a piece here on um, some people may think promotion talk is pie in the sky after City's inauspicious start, but it never takes an awfully long to get into this try. And it just shows a, a graphic there of 1996-97 um, uh, first division attendance losses and gains on 95-96. So we. It just basically after what one game, it sounds that obviously we're down four percent of what we were last season. But I mean, a bit early to uh, start battle rattling on about that. I mean, we're still one of the best supported teams, obviously, and a lot bigger crowds than some of the uh, thirty thousand crowd was it the first game. So a lot bigger crowds and uh, a lot of the a lot of the top league teams were getting. So you got the opposition view there with the with the old John Aldridge. Um, again, articles, City 2, Portsmouth 2, some images of that. He can smile, scam, and then obviously the Champions thing with uh, Gary James continues. Um, great old picture there with Colin Bell. Great stuff there. See, these these programmes are far much better than there. You can see the pull-out thing, Lee, Lee Bad Buy, or Lee Badbury, sorry. <laughs> there. I mean, these magazines were great compared to what they are now. Um, obviously, you get some action pictures, but we'll dick off there, and that all the lovely laser blue. Uh, the reserve thing again. Uh, the reserves had lost their first game to Sunderland 3 2. No change there. Obviously, match day marvel. So, about the fans and stuff. Nice little pictures there. Just say, so, basically, Ryan Dean gets a mention again. So it's basically the same thing. I mean, you're going to get the same sort of article, the Junior Blues, again there. Um, it's a Tony Book tribute evening. A star stood occasion to celebrate the current achievement of Manchester great for Piccadilly old cells. So, you know, you had your things that you have, that you have now. But obviously everyone was a bit more approachable then. Home league match prices here. Oh, this is a good one. Home and away. This is, this is what it's costing. So... 99 for this season, so there's category A, B, and C games again. So, similar to today, in the main stand, blocks B and C 16 quid for the A, 17 for B, 18 for C. Main stand blocks A, D, E, F, H, C 15, 16, and 17. Main stand block G, OAPs five pound for the, for the OAPs. Kipak stand up a tier 14 pound, 15 pound, and 16 pound for the categories. Kipak stand lower tier 12, 13, and 4. So, we were in, we were, um, had season cards in the lower tier for a long time, so they were actually a little bit cheaper. JD Sports Family Stand Adult nine, ten, and eleven pound. JD Sports Family Stand Juniors six pound. North Stand Adult ten, eleven, twelve. I spent many, many games in the North Stand as, as my my lad used to take his mate, and I used to get a ticket for the North Stand or the Gene Kelly stands and stuff because I let him have my season card at times, season ticket. Then it was North Stand Junior OAP seven quid. North Stand Adult ten, eleven, twelve. So, I mean, you can see the difference in prices. Prices there. Uh, the same I ticket in that last one there, the Portsmouth game was, was £13, wasn't it? Um, again, at the back, it's showing showing the league. We're not, we're not, we're not bottom, but uh, 
you know, obviously that's the league after two games. Um, so that was Tranmere. Uh, let's tell you what the uh, what the sad score was for the, for the Tranmere game. Again, City won, Tranmere won. Um, a crowd of 26,000, so it dropped a bit from the first game, 26,336. We probably had a, bit, a lot bigger crowds than when we ended up in the second division. Scorers um, was City. City did take the lead with Horlock on 46 minutes and L Jones uh, equalised with Tranmere in 61 minutes. City was Margus and Brightwell, Vikings, Vaughan, Beasley, Simon, Simons. I keep saying Simmons. Brannon, Horlock, Brad Bricking, Gladsley, Rosler. Subs, Summer became on in 78th minute. Van Blurk was unused. Van Blurk, there you go. McGoldrick, unused. Uh, Tranmere, so let me have a look if I know any of those guys. <sighs> no. Aldridge was a sub that day and he was unused, so he probably would have scored a couple if he'd come on, to be honest with you. So things aren't going great. Another draw at home. And then we had, and now I don't know why I haven't got this, because I'm sure I went to this um, Blackpool in the second leg at home. Um, oh, dear. Well, what can we say? This was the 26th of August. Uh, I do have an attendance for this, even though City till I died. 12,563. Well, you know, there's, uh, there's some loyalty. Brightwell, Vikings, Vaughan, some of Simons. Brannon Horlock, Brad Bricking, Gladsley Rosler, Subs Dickoff, Dick 72, Van Blurk, there you go, who, re who remembers Van Blurk, 90th minute, McGoldrick came on in the 66th minute, Blackpool team, I had no idea any of those, to be honest with you, the Blackpool team, we won 1-0, yippee, so that meant after losing the first leg 1-0, it went to extra time, and the dreaded penalties, and yes, you guessed it, we lost 4-2 we lost on penalties, so. That was depressing, but I say there's only 12,000 suffered that. So, all right, we've not always been 30,000 crowds and selling out. Certainly didn't sell out main road all the time, but there you go. What do you expect? We get knocked out by a bloody Blackpool over two legs. Uh, <laughs> and the uh, the last game of uh, August uh, 1997, the last game I'm going to look at today, was Charlton Athletic away. Uh, Nationwide League Division 1, Charlton 2, City 1. So, you know, two draws and two defeats and out of the co out of the um, Coca-Cola Cup, as it was then. A crowd of 14,000, Charlton, that wasn't bad. Uh, City scored, took the lead with Gerard Vikings on 20 minutes. Charlton Van Blurk, 67 own goal. Well, there you go, Van Blurk. Cheers, mate. And Kay Jones scored on 69 minutes. And the City team was Marcus and Brightwell, Van Blurk, Vikings, Simmons and McGoldrick, Brannan, Horlock, Bradbury. Some of the Rossler subs, Scully, 79 minute. Dickoff, I said my memory's not good. I don't remember some of these players. Dickoff unused and Warren unused. So that ended our uh, our, our August with uh, two points from four games. So we weren't we weren't doing very very well were we at that stage. Um, before I leave, obviously the 97 98 start to the season. We enjoyed that little lot back. I mean, look at this beauty. This was produced in the winter of uh, 1997. The official megastore, megastore, megastar, megastar, eh? Uh, Poster magazine of Manchester City FC. All City's top players in full colour action shots. And a little clever thing in this as well, I'll show you. A gigantic Georgie King Lazio wall poster. So each player's got it, got his own, got his own picture. Kit Simons, Martin Margotson. All these legends, Ian Brightwell, well, Ian Brightwell, he's a legend. Richard Edgell, we all love Richard. Never the most popular. Gerard Vikings. Eddie McGoldrick, there you go. <laughs> Paul Dickoff gets a double page spread there. That's not as big as King Clads is going to be, though. Paul Dickoff. Jed Brannan. You might notice these on this other side don't really mean anything, but I'll show you what that is at the end. Kevin Orlock, legend, super Kev, Michael Brown, I think he's on Quest now doing the EFL stuff. There we go, Jason Van Blurk. I recognise the face, I'm not particularly recognise a player, which is probably easily forgettable. Tony Vaughan. Moonchester and the squad. There's the squad. What a great squad in front of the Kipax. Hey, 
And yeah, all, all that other thing was a gigantic in Gladzipoles. If you wanted to totally destroy you, destroy this thing, which I didn't. I mean, you're supposed to put it on the wall. As I say, I was at an age where I didn't do it then. But there's, there's all these pages here. I and mean, obviously, there's George's head, Kinky's head. So all these pages, if you actually unstaple it all and cut them up, you'd end up with a massive Georgie King Clancy. So, you know, poster. So, you know, you take all the, all the squares, all the different squares, and you, you would stick them, solid tape them all together. If it was a kid in those days, I would have done that. I would have loved that. But, uh, hey, I, I hope you enjoy that. Look back to 97, 98. Anyway, I mean, that's about it. I, obviously, we've got um, Brighton Hold Albion tomorrow. I think it'll be a tough game. Tomorrow, Brighton have started quite well. Uh, I think there's 10 or 11 teams on four points and Brighton are one of them. And um, I think they played with 10 men last week against Southampton. They were really, really unlucky to uh, to lose that, to be honest with you. They played really well. So we've got to have our wits about us tomorrow. I don't think our first three games, we've been really on the ball, some of our players. Um be interested again with Pep, what team he's going to stick in tomorrow. Um, we'll see what, what happens with that. Obviously, he's, he's always got a couple of surprises. Most people are shouting for Cancelo. I mean, I, I honestly think early days of the season, Pep, Pep needs the points on the board. We say we've got some very winnable games coming up. Um, so I think he'll stay with his tried and trusted for now. And Cancelo will get a, you know, he will obviously he got a couple of minutes the other day. Um, yeah, of course, he'll get a, he'll get a start. But I, th I think he might stick with his tried and trusted. But some people think Cancelo might be in tomorrow. I don't know. We'll obviously, we'll obviously wait and see. I'm looking forward to that. It's a 3 p.m. kickoff on a Saturday, which is a rarity in itself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. As I say, it's the first one I've done. Uh, I hope to get my lad on it and we can have a bit of banter with my son as well. I uh, hope you like the little history thing with 97, 98. As I said, I'll pick boxes at random. Uh, I might go for a, an early 60s or a 1970s one next time. And obviously, I'll go, go newer as well. And as I said, it... I've, I've not been to all the City games. I don't go to all the away games. I've been pl to plenty in my time, obviously. I've been, I can't add up how many I've been to. But I've got, I've got a lot of memories and work commitments, private commitments. I mean, many City fans of my age, we didn't always get there. Um, when I had the video shop, for instance, in the 90s, I, I, worked so, I did seven days a week for nine months, just me working in the video shop to try and get it off the ground. So... And I used to hate it because I couldn't listen to City on a radio. It just crucified. I just couldn't do it. I just, I, it was horrible. I couldn't listen on a radio. I couldn't do. It. I couldn't be there. I just had to vir virtually switch off because it's too painful. And I tried to switch off. You can't switch off from City. You know, you, you could never do it. I tried to. It was so bad sometimes. I wanted to switch off. And oh, well, and people used to come in. Obviously, I'm a video show. I got a chat to people. Lots of City fans came in. Lots of United fans came in. So you have to talk football, but I didn't listen into the game. So if the match was on, I'd obviously be watching the film. And then someone, oh, oh, we're losing one nil. So I, I, it was just too depressing. And I, I just, what I did was usually tune in at five o'clock to find out what the score was. Because I just couldn't cope. I just couldn't cope with the radio. And I think it was probably Piccadilly Radio. You know, they had all these things, goal stuff, where you used to say. And it was never City who scored. It was always someone else. So... Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've got loads of memories on that, which, which I'll bring, and I hope you enjoy that. And I hope you enjoyed this, and um, tune in again. I'll probably, obviously, there's no city. they got the international break yet. We've got uh, Vinny's testimonial coming up, haven't we? I'm, I'm not sure the date of that. Um, so I'll uh, obviously maybe back in time for that one. Um, I can only do what I say. I'll do me. If you go over to my, um, if you're into movies and board games, etc., please visit my this channel and obviously look on them um, uh, movies board games and poster reviews etc which i do on there which I, I love almost as much as i love manchester city and then i've loved my family etc but uh, manchester city probably just edges it my my dad used to take me obviously the games in the 60s and my mum used to take me to the cinema and the theater so that's why i've got a love for both uh, my mum used to take me to the Disney of Disney films, and my dad used to take me to things like um, Chariots of Fire, Ben Hur, Battle of Britain. You know, he used to take me to all those sort of things. Um, my mum used to take me to Disney, so I've got I, I love films, obviously, and uh, such a wide range of films. And I love City. I mean, you City fans out there, you know, I'm sure you I'm sure you feel the same. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll, I'll be back very soon. And whatever you're doing, so I'll see you again. Be good and uh, have a great time, and look after yourselves. Cheers for now.